Howdy. Uh, this is a weirder episode of the Otaku Experience because, as you can see, like there's no there's no epic. Why do I look like this? Hold on. There we go. I don't know why my camera looked like that. Oh my god. Um, this is a this is a kind of a weirder thing because there's not really going to be any edits or uh, any graphics or anything major like that. That's because um, this episode is. Uh, being filmed later when I didn't have a lot of time to do it and uh, but I still wanted to get it out because this week was really weird um and uh weird in in good and not so (laughs) good not like bad things but just like why we'll get to it but um anyways hope y'all are doing well uh let's just kick it off so the talk of the town uh, that even like transgressed, or I guess um, not transgressed, but like, is it transgressed? Anyways, that covered more than just the anime community, but spanned off into other pop culture conversations was the Lord of the Rings, the War of the Rahiram trailer came out. Uh, the anime, uh, let me go, yeah the anime movie that we've been talking about for what feels like years, but it's really only been, well, it's been years since it was announced, but you know, it's been probably about a year that we've been talking about it in terms of like regular kind of updates. Um, And so earlier this year at uh, Annecy International Film Festival, they had uh, footage show to the audience. We just got screen grabs and stuff. We've had concept art for years. Um, We finally got moving images, audio. We got the whole thing. Uh, And so we're not going to play the full trailer, obviously, because it's copyrighted, but you can find it on, you know, YouTube, Twitter, however you want to watch it. There's also a Japanese trailer, um, but that doesn't have any captions for it. And it's essentially just the same as this trailer, just minus like the first 15 or so seconds. Um, And it's just a shorter version, but it's I watched it. It covers like all the same scenes. There's maybe like one or two shots that are different, but like generally speaking, it's the same trailer. Um, and so we'll just stick with this one because this one we can kind of understand it a bit more. Uh, but if you still want to watch that, you, you can go do that. But so it starts out with this, with like the nostalgia play. Oh, sorry. My my audio is, is muted. OK, here we go. So it starts out with the nostalgia play and stuff that we can't play. Like, I think that's enough. I think everybody figured out. So they they started off with Peter Jackson, who uh, is, you know, the director, producer, one of the writers, like the pioneer of the Lord of the Rings live action films. Like he was the one who was gunning for it and pushing for it. Um, and then he later on did the Hobbit films to which, you know, mixed reception. But they're starting with him because he is a producer and he's kind of uh, he, he's back for um uh, they're doing a lot more Lord of the Rings stuff over at Warner Brothers, and so he's kind of, I don't think he's directing anything, and I could be wrong about that, but I think he's kind of just almost like a creative pioneer for the franchise now, um, and so that they're starting off with that, like he's like uh, their figurehead almost over there, um, because obviously Tolkien has passed away. So he's kind of the one leading, you know, he's the name that everybody knows. So they do this for like the first like thing where they do nostalgia play and they go like, cool, back to Middle Earth through the eyes of director uh, Kinji Kamiyama. And then they show the animation. And the animation looks good. Um, it is a little weird because uh, it, it's just weird like seeing Middle Earth like this. Like I just got, I got so used to it in the uh, in the live action films like that's just how i picture middle earth now um now that this is a bad thing but it's just like a weird weird little uh, jarring experience uh, having been a, such a huge fan of those movies i watch the the lord of the rings trilogy like every year um and this year i think i'm going to end up watching it twice because we watched the uh re-release in theaters so and i'll be watching it again at the end of the year because that's usually when i watch the films but um so it you know it shows the uh, animation and it, and it looks good. You can see why they hold it out because they knew that this is Lord of the Rings. So if this if this was not perfect to the first impression, like everybody would be on it. Like we saw what happened with Rings of Power. Like everybody would be on this. So they held off. Um, and 
I think it's a good thing too because now the excitement can really build because this comes out in what like four months or so like uh not that far away we so we don't have to wait that long but then we go and we start getting some shots like we got this shot before um we start seeing some characters and we start getting a glimpse of the story so there's uh, uh I believe his name is Helm Hammerhand um and he's kind of he's the king he's sitting on this thing right now and this is I believe Hera um and then so this guy walks in and he's like, yo. With an offer to strengthen Rohan. Hera, daughter of Helm, I, Wolf, seek your hand in marriage. All right, so Wolf, and they, they talk about it later, but um, Wolf is someone that Hera knew when she was younger, and now he's coming back to offer, uh, to take her hand in marriage. And the father, as you can see, visibly doesn't like this. They're trying to do like a... Um, those one of those political moves I, i'm blanking on the words it's late guys it's, i've had a full day but one of those political moves where they like try to bring the two kingdoms together through the offspring um and so they're trying to do that they're she's not a fan she's like i don't want to marry you i'm good bruv not a fan and so the two dads fight about it they're like all right you know what we'll decide if <laughs> if she gets married between us like forget them we'll decide so they fight and then Helm Hammerhand does this, bro. This is crazy. You will live to regret this, old man. <laughs> and so, and so they cut to it later, uh, and it, he's like, he's like, he's dead. <laughs> like he killed him with a punch. <laughs> that is so. I don't know if that would have worked in live action, but here, that is so awesome, and it works so well. Um, one thing I will notice is with this line here, you will pay for this with your life. So it's not bad. It's not a bad performance. And that's something I, I would give as a note over the whole trailer. I, these don't sound like they're bad performances. And obviously let me give the obvious caveat that I shouldn't have to give, but there's, you know, people on the internet who are going to pretend like this isn't a common sense thing. This is obviously a trailer. And so I can't judge completely based off of this. But my first impression is it sounds like the voice actors and I don't I don't know what percentage of these voice actors are fully career voice actors and what percentage are like Hollywood names that they brought in for the English dub. Um like live action actors that they just are like, "Hey, you're a name and you can help us sell this movie, so come act in this." Um and and so this, this is something I would like to talk to uh, Chris Carr about. I'll have to I'll have to get with her because we I've been trying to we've been a little behind the scenes stuff. We've been trying to get something uh, going, but I, I've told her like I don't just want to bring her on randomly and just like I, I want it to be like something. And this could be that something because she loves Lord of the Rings and she also has the tr true noir uh, audio book. Uh, she's one of the actresses in it that Rob's working on, and so we could have. Uh, something there. I, I think there's something there that we can definitely look into it about. And she knows a lot more about Lord of the Rings than I do. And she's also a voice actress. So it kind of all pans out. But first impressions for me is this sounds a little bit like actors giving a performance as if it was a live action performance rather than an animated performance where not that you have to be like crazy or unrealistic, but it needs to be a little bit, a little bit more. Um, Cause it feels like, like the way he's talking in this line here this with your life like i can imagine his face in the booth and i can imagine like seeing that emotion on his face but the the anime face is is doing good but it's not it's not matching that voice and so i wish there was a little bit more like it, it's almost like he's giving like you know the intensity you would expect in like a real life scenario but I want 200% of that. You know what I mean? It's just a little note that I have uh, so far. But like I said, trailer, I don't even know like what's going to happen. But, and I'm trying to make sure that uh, no copyright stuff happens. It, Rob, if something happens, I apologize. Also, respectfully, that's all I'll say. Respectfully. She's, I, I'm, 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 you know, I was watching this and I was like, because I won't get too deep into it, but you know, with today's political climate and stuff, we just saw what happened with like Rings of Power and with Star Wars shows. Like, I do wonder like how fans are going to take this. Are they going to give it a slide because it's an anime or are we going to see stuff where like, you know, 
because there's a strong, capable woman in the lead, you're going to have those minority groups um, be like, oh, like I, I, I am a little nervous for that. Um, but, you know, we'll see. So far, so good. I haven't seen too much about it. So hopefully we'll be good with that. But um, so she's like, you know, she does some cool fight and stuff. And then the rest of the trailer is just like all action. You get this, th- dude, this scene's going to be this whole thing is going to be just a spectacle. It's going to be so much fun to watch. Uh, and watching the trailer the first time, I was a little kind of like, hmm, because it was a little less of what I expected. Like they didn't get to the war stuff until like the last like 20 seconds. And the rest of it was kind of like the first bit was like, remember Lord of the Rings live action? Well, here comes anime Lord of the Rings. And then after that, they were like romance plot. Um and then they got to the war. And so I was a little like, eh, but then I watched it a couple more times um, just th- throughout seeing it like on social media and I would scroll and see it and I'd be like, I'll just watch it again. Or, you know, hearing other people talk about it and be like, maybe I should watch it again to see what they were talking about. Um, I, I really like it now. Uh, and and I'm, I'm excited to see um, more of a, I guess, singular character focused drama because with rings of power with the original lord of the rings with the hobbit um at least all the live action stuff we've gotten for those they all feel like very ensemble pieces but this at least the way this trailer is pushing it it feels very uh one person focused and i think i wasn't really expecting that and uh It'll just be interesting to see. But I'm not like a super big Tolkien expert, and so I don't really know all the lore behind it. But all I will say is that uh, I thought this trailer looked pretty freaking cool, and I, I'm very satisfied. Um, I, 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 like I said, I do have some notes, but, uh, you know, not enough notes that like... like they're, they're, the notes that I have are based off of like really small snippets and nothing like major. Like it's not like, oh no, the animation's bad or something. Like luckily nothing like that has happened. It's like little stuff that I'm like, okay, well this is probably just because I don't have a big enough sample size for any of this that I'm just, these are my fears showing up, like my worst fears about this. Um, but overall, about what I wanted, about what I expected, and uh, I'm very satisfied but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought about that. Now, this most of the stories that happened this week are like anime or uh, movie related, like anime film stuff. Um, but this one is an actual anime thing, and this one has to do with the Netflix One Piece. Um, and so, with the Netflix One Piece stuff, they showed some uh, some new uh, concept art, um, and as you can see, very recognizable characters. Very recognizable, but a little bit different from the uh, other adaptation that's been going on, the, the the original anime adaptation. So, like, very clearly, like, that's one piece. I can tell that that's one piece. But also, like, the visual style, like, not maybe not the style, but, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like a, it's the same vibe, but it's a different vibe, you know? Um, And, and so I think that's really it. But, yeah, those, the, those concept art uh, pieces came out. And uh, a lot of people were talking about it, and I thought it looked very good and very exciting. And then here's what I actually want to talk about with this. Uh, Oda, the uh, author, uh, Eiichiro Oda, who worked on, uh, who writes the manga, who is uh, obviously really close working on the original anime, working on the live action, and now with this new anime, um, with The Witch Show, he actually gave a quote uh, talking about it, and he said this he said um this was a production note uh he said um i remember oda sensei telling us through his comments i want you all to express rather than copy and paste the work he said for example it's creating your interpretation and expression instead of recreating a panel from the manga and then he continued to say i feel like one piece allows us to work in a different in different ways uh and these young passionate staff are all up to the challenge i just think that's awesome and You know, I wish that more authors had this, like, ability to be like, don't create my stuff literally one-to-one. Like, this is a different medium, and now this is no longer a, like, one person or, like, really small crew thing. This is now a huge group of artists coming together, and it's going to have to be collaborative. And everybody's going to have to have their voice be shared while we're all going for one unified vision. You know, it's everybody's got to work together here as 
uh, as we're all being artists. Um, and I really like that where it's like, hey, you know, I think it's specifically talking about in terms of like animation, but I think it, I think it speaks to a broader thing as well. The, where, where he says, uh, I want you to express rather than copy and paste the work. Um, and then he goes on to say, uh, create your interpretation rather than creating a panel from the manga, like shot for shot. And I really like that. Um, one thing I, you know, if, if you've been watching the show for a while, if you've been watching my channel, King Tannic, you know that, uh, or if you know me in real life, one of my criticisms about a lot of stuff, uh, specifically with anime, is that it's it's al it almost feels pointless a lot of the time because it's so one-to-one -one that it ruins, it doesn't ruin, but it it can hinder the show if the manga clearly doesn't feel like a manga made to be a show. Like there's there's anime that I watch where I'm like, this is clearly like a manga chapter where that manga chapter stopped and then a new manga chapter started and ended and then we have another one in this episode. Um, and it, it and it's very, I won't say disorienting, but you notice it. Um, and I was, and I, I think to myself, like this would be so much better if they like, you know, keep the core. Like, I, I feel like when people say this, it's like I'm saying like blasphemy or something. I'm All I'm saying is like, Turn it into an anime. Like, don't just animate the manga. Turn the manga into an anime. Like, you have to change some structure. You have to change some stuff. Um, like with uh, Haremia. Uh, a lot of people hated this decision, and then they even capitalized off of that hatred for the decision by doing the missing pieces. But with Haremia, the, the manga is a lot longer. Um, but they turned it into a one-season anime because they were like, hey, you know, if we're going to do this, this is the best way to do it. Um, and so they did it all in one go. And a lot of people hated that, but I loved it. As someone who only watched the anime, it felt like it was an, like it was like an original show. It didn't feel like it was like adapted from anything. Um, or if it did, it felt like it was like a proper adaptation where they turn it into what it can best be as an anime rather than trying to make the manga just in a moving form. Um, and I and I like that here, and I and I, I feel like he's kind of giving the creators a little bit of a green light, not to necessarily like just skip arcs or whatever, um, but to you know to to make the best decisions that they think need to be made. So it's like he's handing it off to these people, these animators, these directors, you know, the people who are writing the score and everything like that. He's handing it off to them and saying like, I'm entrusting you with this, but. It, it can't just be this. Like, you need to take it and turn it into the best anime it can be. And if that means, you know, changing, you know, like a conversation or if that means changing a panel or a shot or whatever, like changing the focus of a scene or something, you know, whatever makes it the best it can be um, for the new medium that it's going to be in. That can be the case. Now, I was talking about this with a, a friend of mine the other night, and we were talking about it. And I was like, you know, th there is like the devil's advocate in me that's like, or maybe it's not devil's advocate, but just like the conspiracy theorist that's like, maybe, you know, maybe Oda is just saying this because he already has a successful anime that's like a one-to-one -one manga recreation. And so he's he has the freedom to do this now. Or maybe this is Oda just genuinely being like the most based manga author that we have, which... I'm hoping is the latter because that would be in line with most of what I've seen from Oda. Oda, you know, from what I've seen, seems to really love just the art form of everything. Um, and I know I've talked about how he doesn't take care of himself and I wish that he would take care of himself some more, but uh, his passion is there and his knowledge is there and he knows what he's talking about and he, he knows what's going to be best. And sometimes what's going to be best is relying on others to decide what's best. Um, and if that's the case with this show, I'm all for it. And this has made me really excited. Uh, I was already like uh, kind of intrigued because I was like, well, they wouldn't just green light this for no reason. Like they'd have to green light it for a reason. Um, and this feels like that reason. Like, okay, we have, I don't, I don't want to make it sound like it's a bad thing, but we have vanilla One Piece, the anime. Like we have One Piece, like this is One Piece. Now we can make One Piece that's, 
a little different in some areas or something like that. Um, I don't know. It, it's just made me interested to see what could happen and where it could go. So I just thought that was awesome. Getting into some not so awesome news. Um, Attack on Titan, the final season, the final chapters, the last attack movie is real, folks. It's real. It's happening. So, <laughs> so essentially, this is the, you remember the two specials that aired last year? Um, the, the Attack on Time, the final seasons, the final chapters, chapter one and two. Okay, so they're taking those two hour-long specials and they're putting them together with some improved animation. Like, it took them a year to release those two, you know, episodes. You'd think the animation would have been finished, but they're releasing it with updated, better finished animation. Uh, and they're going to put that in theaters. And I'm not going to lie, I'll be there to go watch it. But uh, but still, just like it just it just feels like they're gonna milk this dry. Like when you get to the point where your title needs like four uh, semicolons, <laughs> like like it's it's too long. You can't keep having subtitles. You can't have Attack on Titan, the final season, the final chapters, the last attack. Like like are we just gonna? What happens after this? Like do we do it? Do we do it again? Do we do something else? Like do we then do a a compilation film of? I don't know, like the full season? I don't know. Like, I I don't know. Where do we go? Um, <laughs> seems like only up from here, as far as I can tell. Uh, it's just a goofy decision, but I'll be there. I, I don't think it's actually a bad decision to uh, do this. I think this is something that a lot of the fans, including me, thought they should have done initially with the ending of Attack on Titan, like just do it in theaters. And now it feels like they're like, oh no, we made a mistake. And I'm not saying that's the case, but it feels like that. They're like, oh no, we missed out. Like we could have done that, um, but they didn't. <laughs> now they're doing it. Um, and so we just kind of get to laugh about it now. Um, I don't know. This whole final season of Attack on Titan has just been so weird to watch because it's just been so many wacky decisions of just spacing it out over like four years and then taking like the final two episodes and splitting those across like a year. And then now we're getting like new finished animation. Like if this if this doesn't show you just like what a state MAPA's in right now, I don't I don't know what will. Um and like I said before many times, I know that MAPA is not the only one. I know that this is like an industry wide thing, but MAPA's been the one in the news a lot. But I don't know. I'll be there. I think it's silly. Um, hopefully it plays in uh, U.S. theaters because uh, it opens in Japan on November 8th. So hopefully we'll get it, you know, sometime in like March or something. I don't know. That'd be cool. <laughs> and anyway, getting back to good movie news. Uh, this one is something that we've been talking about for a bit. Um, and this is one that I actually like didn't think would be um, would have been possible. But it looks like it is because the look back anime movie is coming to North American theaters. How did this happen? So if you guys remember, this was like a 60 minute movie almost. Um, and in North America, at least in the U.S., movies don't qualify as movies to be put in theaters unless they're 70 minutes. Like you need a 70 minute runtime minimum. The movie was too short. So I don't know what they did. They can't just bypass that. So I'm thinking they did my idea. I think someone someone at G Kids watched the Otaku Experience and was like, this guy's smart. He's spitting. Where my idea was like, just put an interview or something of like the creators at the end and just build out your time to like 10 minutes extra and you'll be fine. Like that seemed like the most simple solution. And, you know, I, I'm not going to say that I was right. Obviously, I won't know until... We see it. They haven't said anything. They just say, like, it's the thing. They haven't said there's going to be uh, interviewers or something like that. Um, but, I mean, they are talking about the director. So maybe maybe there's going to be something there. But I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's good news. So the tickets are going to be on, on sale soon. And uh, we'll see. They also released a little bit of a trailer. Um, I thought this was kind of cute. The animation's nice. And, uh, I'm, I'm, for the most part, I'm trying to avoid the stuff, um, because I've heard like how good it is. And I, I just, I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, I, I want to go in kind of blind. Like it's, it's 60 minutes. I, there's only so much that they can show in the trailers. Like I'll just, I'll just go in blind. And so I'm trying to avoid it. I know it's about artists. 
Um, and I know that it's kind of like a love letter to like the creativity and the industry and things like that, uh, and, uh, the author's life, but, uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, moving on, uh, to this, the, uh, so the Naruto live action film is, uh, you know, kind of got kicked back on after uh, the live action One Piece came out at Netflix and they hired a director, Destin Dano Cretton from uh, Shang-Chi. Um, and uh, they've been moving forward with that. Well, it looks like the script is done. And uh, they talked a little bit about like what is going to like be in the uh, movie. These ads are crazy. This is why I like filming the show in advance. So that way I can escape the hell that is these ads. Okay. Here we go. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Huo confirmed the script for the live-action Naruto movie is done and that Cretton is now doing his stuff with the story. I think that's such a cool choice because he's going to be able to capture how nuanced and special Naruto is without getting distracted by the big world that it is, which I think could easily be done by someone who's not a fan or someone who's coming in for a cash payday, Huo said. This is definitely a movie that comes at it from a love of who Naruto is and that, and that character and his relationships. Now, that's good to hear, but that's also a little bit scary because... You know, there is that little bit of a fear where the film becomes its own thing. We're like, oh, what's Naruto about? Naruto. Oh, but like, what's it about? Naruto. Like, that's that gets a little bit concerning where we've seen that kind of happen with modern Star Wars a little bit where it's like, oh, what's what's this new Star Wars show about? Oh, well, it's about Star Wars. You know, and they're like riffing on the audience knowing Star Wars. I hope that that's not the case. I hope they, you know, that there's an added benefit to people who know the world of Naruto and know the the story, whether they read the manga or watch the anime or whatever. Um, but I hope that it's still like, you know, at its core, something that's not just Naruto. Um, not that Naruto's bad or anything, but I, I get worried when new projects are just purely based on pre-existing projects. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if anyone's following. Me and Rob are on the same wavelength with this, and I don't know if anyone else is. But this just, you know, all I'll say is that they're, they're fans of the source material, and I think that's a good thing. Um, and I hope that this Naruto film ends up being good. And like I said, I hope that it's something deeper than just being like... Naruto. You know what I mean? I, I I feel like it's it makes sense in my head, in my uh hair net thing. I forget what it's called. But uh it might be hair net. I don't know. But you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that makes any sense. We're gonna move on. That was it. The the script's done. They like it. Uh they think it's they think that it's gonna be good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So the last thing. It's not really a major story. It's just kind of a little thing that I thought that everybody should know about is uh, Grave of the Fireflies, the Studio Ghibli film that you can't find anywhere, is coming to Netflix on September 16th. Uh, and I, the reason why this is a big deal is because I believe this is the only Studio Ghibli film that you can't actually find, whether on like a streaming service like Max or whether you pay for it or anything like that. Like you can't find, at least in North America, you can't find Grave of the Fireflies um, legally. Because I, I know, because we, we've been, me and my sister and uh, my girlfriend have been doing, like, uh, weekly watches of the Ghibli films, like, some of the uh, some of the ones that we haven't seen, as well as re-watching the ones we have, and we got, we've been doing them in release order, and we got to the point where Grave of the Fireflies was, and we looked, we could not find it, um, and then, you know, like, two or three weeks later, this news comes out, and we were like, oh, so we're very excited, and I figured that you guys should know, because... You know, who knows who's going to get the rights after Netflix and Netflix, who knows how long they'll have the rights for. Um, you know, this could easily like go back into the vault or something, you know, after that. So take your opportunity to watch this because I hear this is like uh, Studio Ghibli's like most depressing movie. So have fun with that. I know I will. Anyway, we're going to read some uh, comments and questions from the last episode of the show. Uh, if you want to get your comment or question on the next episode, uh, just go into the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on whatever. So starting out, we have Hank Colasar, 4088, who says, I've fallen into the rom-com trap. Good. 
My favorite is Alia Sometimes Hides Her Feelings in Russian. Uh, episodes, uh, six episodes out so far. Uh, the manga is great. The, the dialogue is really snappy and well-written, and the anime follows the manga pretty well. Cheers and Godspeed. Also, regarding the leaks, I believe it is a disgruntled employee, too. A great way to ruin the anticipation. Thanks, Sarah. I Yeah, the, the disgruntled employee thing is still my prevailing theory, but it could just be like a... I, I don't think we've gotten any updates about that this week, as far as I saw, but... Uh, I think it's still, um, you know, it, it, it could be, it could be just like a, a group of hackers trying to get like leverage on whoever, um, or it could just be a disgruntled employee. I don't really know. But anyway, I'm glad you've fallen into the rom-com trap. Welcome to the dark side. This is, uh, one of, if not my favorite anime genres, cause it's just so silly. Um, when they're good, when they're good, they're good. But I've, I've started to come across more and more like, like, you know, almost like parodies of themselves. Like, I don't know. Like, there's a certain level of rom-com trash I'm ready to take. But, like, at a point. <laughs> you know what I mean? At a point, it just gets it gets too trashy. Um, but I'm glad you're enjoying Alia. I'm enjoying Alia, too. Uh, my only thing with Alia is, like, I don't really know, like, what it's about. Like, I know what the plot is. Like, the plot is she speaks in Russian. He knows, but he doesn't say anything. And so you have that gag, and they're running for student council. But, like, I'm trying to... F I'm sitting here, like, what is this, like, show about? Like, what is this show exploring? And I haven't found that yet. But I, I'm enjoying it. I'm having a decent time. I laugh and smile in every episode. One character is uh, the sister. Uh, what is it? Suo or something? She gets on my nerves because... Uh, I, I don't know. I've never really found that type of humor in anime funny where they like tease and joke about like, as they would call it, wincest, but just incest in anime. Like, I've never found that funny, but a lot of people are. So, I mean, good for y'all. I don't know, bro. I don't know. But anyway, other than that, I'm enjoying the show. Um, at Sam T B four three two seven says the otaku experience. Let's have him go. Howdy, Israel. Howdy. Thank you for watching, and I'm glad you're uh, enjoying the show. And guys, that's gonna do it for uh, this episode of the Otaku Experience. I guess we could go through the audience rankings, but if we're all being honest, you probably don't care, and uh, and that's okay. But uh, <laughs> if you guys uh, enjoyed the show, you should subscribe to the Burn Network because uh, there are good shows to watch almost every day. Um, most of which are hosted by Robert Meyer Burnett. He's also working on his project, uh, True Noir, a uh, audio drama. Uh, I don't know if that was good, Rob, but, um, you know, very excited for that. Uh, and uh, obviously continuing to wish him luck um, and health and good being while he... Uh, while he continues to work on that. Um, as someone who, you know, has done nothing to that scale, but has done a project, uh, when I did my documentary back in 2021 and 2022, uh, it, it definitely takes a lot out of you. Um, and I can only imagine with how big the scale is and how long it is uh, and how much expectation there is because of what the source material is. Um, you know, it... I, I I do not I do not uh I do not envy Rob's position. <laughs> Good luck, Rob. Uh, I know you got it, and I'm excited to see how that goes. But anyways, guys, I will catch you all. Oh, listen to the podcast on Spotify if you don't like my face. But anyway, uh, but you'll but you'll miss out on all the visuals and all the graphics that I put in when the show is pre-recorded, um, unlike today. But anyway, I'll catch y'all all later. I hope y'all are uh, having a good day. All right, bye.